All righty. If you recognize any of these book covers, you are probably one of the two billion people who have read one or more of these classic little golden books. These familiar looking books with their gold spine have an interesting story about how they came to be, and it all started in 1942. It wasn't that there were no books for children, but children's books were sold primarily in bookstores, and they were a luxury at $2 a book, or close to $40 today. Books at the time included Mike Mulligan, There Was a Little Engine That Could, The Story of Babar, Madeline, Dr. Seuss, and Pat the Bunny, best-selling children's book in 1940. It took three groups to make little golden books happen. George Duplé and Lucille Ogle from Artists and Writers Guild, Western Printing and Lithographing in Racine, Wisconsin, and Simon & Schuster in New York. These three were convinced that there was a market for high-quality, low-cost books for less prosperous Americans. And so they proposed the unprecedented idea to offer picture books for 25 cents. These could be sold as merchandise in large quantities by Woolworth, Kresge, and other national chains. So now busy parents could buy affordable books wherever they shopped. The first 12 titles were released October 1st, 1942, and they were an instant success. At the top here, you see that each book had a little wording in there that gave parents the assurance that the entire series was being supervised by Dr. Mary Reed of Teachers College. This was in each book until 1960. Not everyone was happy. Um, Under the leadership of Anne Carol Moore at the New York Public Library, librarians then were considered the cultural gatekeepers and moral guardians of our young children. So popular books and series were not acceptable, and neither were little golden books. The Pokey Little Puppy was an original story written by an unknown author, Jeanette Sebring Lowry, and she was paid $75. Now, note that there are no names of authors or illustrators on Little Golden Books covers, but The Pokey Little Puppy has sold over 15 million copies. It's the largest best-selling children's book ever. Okay, one of the um, early golden artists was a guy named Gustav Tengren. He emigrated from Sweden, and he started working for the Disney Company about the time that they were making their first full-length animated film, Snow White. He worked on lots of other films, but then he left and illustrated golden books. In 1944, Little Golden Books signed a licensing agreement with Disney, which continues to this day. So a Little Golden Book was published to coincide with every new Disney film. Um, And Golden Books today still have a strong media tie-in with TV shows and movies. During the late 30s, many artists and writers under threat from Hitler fled Europe to move to New York. So among them was Tibor Gergely. He was from Hungary, and he soon met Georges Duplé, and he began his career in the U.S., illustrating Toodle, Scuffy the Tugboat, and many others. In 1941, George Duplé paid to bring the Russian illustrator Fyodor Rojankowski to New York. After the war, he worked in Poland and France until arriving in Brooklyn in 1941, and he began illustrating 100 golden books. He won the 1956 Caldecott Medal for Frog Went a Courtin by John Langstaff. Another boost to the success of golden books was Eleanor Roosevelt. She urged parents to read aloud to their children, quote, as a way of bolstering family morale and maintaining an atmosphere of normality on the home front. Golden Books provided an affordable supply of cheerful stories which appealed to thrifty Americans. Lucy Sprague Mitchell argued that young children were naturally curious about everyday life. In her best-selling book, she proposed a new kind of child-centered children's literature, creating even more controversy with those librarians. But librarians weren't her audience. Parents and children were. Mitchell's most talented writer was Margaret Wise Brown. Golden Books asked Mitchell to submit manuscripts from her Bank Street Writers Laboratory. Margaret Wise Brown made her debut with Little Golden Books in 1947 with the Golden Egg Book, illustrated by Leonard Weisgard, who had just won a Caldecott and a Caldecott honor. Released in time for Easter, the Golden Egg Book was an immediate success, and Margaret Wise Brown emerged as Golden's lead author until her death at age 42. 
and I'm sure you all recognize Goodnight Moon. It was published also in 1947 by Harper, and it continues to sell over 800,000 copies a year. Eloise Wilkin made her Golden Book debut in 1946. She portrayed her own children or the children of her friends in most of her books, and she knew her fans loved her drawings of children's faces, so that's what she put on the cover. She illustrated 47 Golden Books. While still an unknown artist, young Richard Scarry was given a one-year contract to create four little Golden Books in 1948. He actually considered um, completed six of them, and he was paid $4,800. Scary continued to write and illustrate over 60 books, including the popular Busy Town series. A second wave of artists came to Golden Books, not from Europe, but artists and animators from California. When Alice and Martin Provenson moved to New York, their friend Gustav Tengren introduced them to Golden Books, and the Provensons, along with J.P. Miller, Mary Blair, and Richard Scarry, produced some of the best illustrations during the 40s and 50s. Another great illustrator connected to Little Golden Books is Garth Williams, who illustrated Stuart Little in 1945. He started creating some of these favorite Golden Books in 1946, and you'll be familiar with him because he also illustrated Charlotte's Web and all the Little House on the Prairie books. So, what now? Well, librarians are no longer enemies of series or comics or popular books or little golden books. Random House took over in 2001 and committed to reissuing the classic titles and publishing new ones. So if you would like to revisit a childhood favorite or find a new title, many of the 1,000 little golden books can still be found in your local stores or your library.